In this video, I replaced the front brake pads and discs on a 1976 MG Midget. I haven't seen a video like this yet, so here we go. The discs were in pretty rough shape, so I assume that the pads probably weren't wearing evenly either. Um, the replacement parts for this job are quite affordable. I paid $57 for two front discs, brake pads, retainer, and pins. It looks like the discs and hubs have to come off the spindle to replace the discs. First, the brake pads come off, uh, but you know they're really stuck in there. Instead, I decided to take the entire caliper off and then just punch out the pads. The calipers are held on by two bolts, which is pretty typical, uh, but the bolts are prevented from loosening by two metal tabs, which is not very typical. So you have to pry those tabs up or down before you can loosen up those bolts. Uh, this car uses single opposed piston calipers in the front, which is kind of interesting on a car that I wouldn't necessarily call a sports car. Uh, it's small, absolutely, and really light. Um, this car only weighs about 1,800 pounds, which is probably about just over half the weight of a modern mid-sized car. But the engine has like 55 horsepower stock, uh, so it's not particularly quick by any stretch of the imagination. Still, single opposed calipers. Gosh, you know, I like this design so much better than single piston calipers. I'm sure the manufacturers went to single piston for cost savings, but having the floating calipers invariably and inevitably, they get rust on the pins and they freeze up. Now this doesn't happen with the opposed piston because the two pistons can move independently of each other. Uh, the only issue that arises from having two pistons is that they're harder to retract. Uh, with one piston, uh, you can either twist it in or you can apply force with a C-clamp to force the piston back in, but on the opposed pistons, it's harder to do because when you try to push in one piston, the other piston moves out. So you need to apply pressure on both pistons simultaneously to get them both back into the caliper. So I have a special tool to do this, and I'll add a link to that in the description. Okay, so this special tool, unfortunately, did not work out in this car. The disc on this car is so thin, it's like 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, this tool that I have isn't small enough to fit between the pistons. So, I mean, for all modern day cars, I'm sure this tool works fine. But I was kind of excited I was going to get to use it here and end up not even being able to because it didn't fit. So instead, I ended up using two C-clamps. Oh, man, it was such a pain. So coincidentally, retracting the piston was the longest part of this entire job. Oh, yeah, and I also took off the cap off the brake master cylinder. Uh, so that I could check it to make sure it didn't overflow with fluid that was being pushed back uh, up to the master cylinder. Once the caliper's off, tap on the center cap both towards the center of the wheel but also away from the car while rotating the hub. So after a few turns, it might not look like you're actually getting anywhere, but after a few turns you'll see that it starts moving a little bit and it'll actually start sliding out and you can just tap this off. So. Don't lose patience. It's really easy to just put a screwdriver through this thing and it's the worst because then you need a new one. Uh, but you should be able to see that it, it comes off. You just tap it as you go around the wheel a few times. Um, after you get that off, you can remove the cotter pin holding uh, the wheel hub retaining castle nut. And then you can remove the wheel hub retaining nut with a 15, 16 inch, inch socket. Uh, the entire assembly should come off the spindle, but in my case, it did not come off. So I punch the dimple into the spindle uh, to center the jaw puller and then I use a large three jaw puller to simultaneously pull the hub assembly while pushing on the symbol. And this jaw puller is actually pretty affordable. I think I bought this at Harbor Freight like a long, long time ago, but they're actually pretty cheap. A few taps of the hammer on the center of the jaw puller and I was able to just loosen it up by hand a tiny little bit at a time and I didn't have to get a socket onto the puller. So once this assembly is off, there's uh, 9 16 inch bolts that can be removed that hold the hub onto the disc. So gently tap the disc off the hub. Nope, that's not happening. So I thought maybe I could pop them apart with the press. Boops, that's not it. I ended up tapping the tube apart by tapping the hub off the disc while rotating the hub. So this took some time, but it did work out. Oh man, this disc looks horrible. I cleaned up the rust on the hub before trying to attach the new disc. Uh, I also applied some never seize on the threads and also on the mating surfaces, so hopefully this won't be a problem again if anyone else happens to come back in here, which I uh, 
probably can't even imagine happening at this point. Uh, the assembly is the reverse of disassembly, except the new pads uh, were installed last, which is how I want to take them off, but it didn't work out that way. Then followed by the pad retaining spring and pins. Now this part was actually kind of a pain too. I thought it would have gone better. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly why it is as hard as it is, but it seems that the pads have a little bit of play in them, like they can go be tilted up or tilted down a little bit, and that affects where the spring hits the pad, and that also affects your ability to get that pin in. So once you kind of get all the magic lined up there, you can get those pins in, and uh, that's it. You're all back together, and then you have to do the other side, unfortunately. You're only halfway done, but hope this helps someone out. Uh, good luck and good day.